Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, coming back to history now, in 1852, we had the first airship uh, flown by Henry Giffard. And no prizes for guessing what kind of engine he has used because we can see steam coming out. So, although IC engine uh, was available, but Giffard's first airship was basically a steam engine airship and it was in France. So, Henry Giffard is considered to be the pioneer in airship technology. So, it had a control system which you can, you can see there is a sail on the right hand side. It had an envelope which contained uh, the lighter than gas and a propulsion system. So, the three things that you require are buoyant lift which is through the balloon, control system to fight the winds and go in the desired direction uh, and the propulsive device to enable you to fight the winds. So, all three were present for the first time in Henry Giffard's airship. Okay, then this technology traveled to Australia and uh, there were other people who uh, made balloon flights in Australia, but not the airship, this is still balloon. Okay, and then we saw the military use of balloons in the uh, Franco-Prussian war. There was a war between Prussia and France and in that war for the first time. In ancient times, the Chinese did not use it for an offensive purpose. They used it for only indicating and marking where their troops are, etc. But this is the first offensive use of the LTS systems uh, in any war or military environment. Okay. Moving on, uh, Henry Giffard, who made the first airship, kept on working further in this technology and he realized that uh, this technology can be used for tourism. Because at that time, people were struggling to get airborne. Okay? This is much before 1903 when Wright Brothers flew. This is 1878. So, the aerospace technology at that time was driven by developments in LTA systems. Aircraft were nowhere to be seen. They were only being conceived and planned. Maybe there were gliders, etc. during this time, but no aircraft. But Airships, aerostats, as you can see, people are already planning to use aerostats for tourism purposes. That means they are sufficiently confident that they can carry tourists, not adventurers, but tourists, people like you and me, common man, arm army. They can be taken into a, an aerostat and float around. Okay. And this is the man, Count Ferdinand August Graf von Zeppelin. The word Graf is the German for count. He is the person who should be credited for the massive increase in the technological levels of airships and it is it's one thing to invent something, it is the other to take it to the commercial and professional level. So, he is the person who has done this. He was a count in Germany and uh, his contribution to airship technology is very phenomenal. So, as a mark of respect, what we do is, so he built the first rigid airship in 1900, before Wright Brothers. The world's first rigid airship was built by Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin. It was called as the Luftschiff Zeppelin 1 or LZ1, LZ1. Luftschiff is airship in German and Zeppelin is the name of the count. Uh, so much is the contribution of this gentleman that uh, all rigid airships are generally called as Zeppelins. Okay? It is like Xerox, which has become a name for photocopying machines. So, his name is synonymous with rigid airships. And airships at that time were mostly rigid because the technological uh, developments in fabrics were not so advanced that they could think of having a load carrying member as well as a gas barrier as well as something that can withstand the atmospheric conditions. Of course, they had these gas bags for um, balloons etcetera or aerostats, 
but for sustained flight over long distances they were not able to do it only using an airbag or only using a uh, textile fabric which can be done now so therefore all airships at that time were generally rigid airships and uh, the europeans you know there are many countries in europe during that time who were uh, able to use this technology and uh, who were able to who were able to give us uh, airships okay and also the technology has also moved to usa so usa was not the leader in this technology they got it actually from the people who went okay jobier blanchard who went to us he took the technology with him to the us so this is graf zeppelin's first airship lz1 and i just want to share with you some information and some dimensions about this airship so it's uh, 420 feet or 128 meters long and 11.73 meters dia okay so the length over diameter ratio is just slightly more than 11 more than 11 that is the l by d okay the volume is uh, if you go in square feet is uh, almost 400000 square feet but we normally work in uh, the si units so it's 11298 meter square meter cube this is a mistake i have to correct this mistake the maximum speed is just uh, 7.5 meters per second okay. so it is going to fight the winds but only to the extent of 7.5 meters per second if the oncoming wind is more than this it is just going to remain where it is slow moving vehicle but ability to travel large distances okay now with this airships became more and more popular more and more capable and uh, some post dumo is a brazilian and many brazilians feel that he should be credited with the first airship because they claim that he was actually able to make an airship and fly before henry giffard but probably there is no record or no documentation and that's why the claim is not that much acceptable in historical literature but that's a matter of historical debate interestingly he was the person who showed that they are very capable and they are able to do things now at that point of time in 1901 when you say capable you have to look at the competition which is only the automobile and the ships so 7.5 meter per second is not a huge uh, performance at least speed wise but look at the time it's 1901 so here is a man who is able to fly around the eiffel tower in 30 minutes using an airship and with this demonstration lot of popularity of airship spread all over europe the internet is full of videos of people running and you know looking around where the airships are and pointing towards them in the sky and showing excitement about it so they became very common across europe and asia uh, usa and uh, they were being used many many places in large numbers because this was the best thing available at that time okay russians uh, <coughs> will come later now the graf zeppelin uh, lz1 was then upgraded or improved to make the other another one now what is the upgradation the upgradation is coming is coming in terms of this this particular control system that you see here on the front as well as in the back so the second one lifts off in 1906 in between we have the right brothers and the germany uh, germany became the largest maker of rigid and semi rigid airships and balloons so they realized that there is also some merit in making semi rigid there is no need to make the whole thing completely rigid you could have a semi rigid structure which as you know contains a framework inside with a flexible covering or flexible envelope in a rigid airship everything is rigid the gas bags are inside but the structure the framework is rigid the covering is also rigid all right so then italy is not lagging behind italy also succeeds in having their own airship and you can notice they have used a very interesting system to give you directional so they have used louvre system uh, mounted behind the airship 
assuming that as the airship goes forward, the vertical loops will deflect and give you the direct side force. Okay, right. So then, <coughs> now we have the first situation in which you can have the crossing of the Atlantic. That was the next challenge for people. That happened in 1910 when an airship flew across the Atlantic. Now you can imagine how much time it took. The speeds would not be very high, and you'll be fighting the winds also. That must the winds in the ocean are quite high or can be quite high. So I would request someone to find out about this particular flight, the first Atlantic crossing by an airship called America. We want to know more details. What was the propulsive system? What was the maximum speed? So on the Moodle page, you can uh, give us some information about this particular airship. Okay, uh, Russia is not lagging behind again, and they also acquire. Uh, airships from Europe for military purposes. And uh, then <coughs> France and Spain, they got together and there was a Franco-Torres, Franco-Spanish production of Astra Torres airships. As you can see now, some amount of aerodynamic shaping is coming into the uh, design, but there is a complete delinking between the gondola or the passenger carrying dolly and the envelope. So, we see that people are being suspended on through ropes below the envelope. You will see slowly as things evolve. Uh, Let us see how many people. So, all over the world, these were the places where airship operators and manufacturers were available. In 1911, there were so many places in the world where, so you can see that the concentration is in Europe. There are these uh, five stars in Europe. There is one in Russia, one in US, and one in Australia. This is where the technology, the most of the work was done in Germany, France, uh, UK, and uh, yes, yeah, in Italy also, correct, Italy, Spain. These are the places where. Now, that was the first period, and then we had the First World War. 